hello, and welcome to this Trident Sports Week 17 Predictions episode. We're also going to make award predictions at the end of the episode, as well as talk about some things going on in the NFL currently. Starting off on Thursday, we have the Cowboys at the Titans. It's going to be 8-15 on the one and only horrible Prime Video. L. We're take, I'm taking the Cowboys over the Titans, 31-24. I take them over the Titans, 24-10. I think that Ezekiel scored two touchdowns, you hope. mainly you because hope mainly because he's on my fantasy team. And despite multi, multiple interceptions by Dak, because he's not on my fantasy team, the defense stays strong and they win it. Now, our 1 and 4 o'clock games on CBS or Fox Sports, but before that, a word from our sponsor. The first 1 o'clock game is the Cardinals at Falcons. Honestly, I'm going to have to take the Falcons on this one, 17 to 10. Without Murray... And probably down to their third stringers, Colt McCoy's likely not playing. They're going to lose. Yeah, the Cardinals have struggled, especially without Murray. And I got to go with the Falcons, 20-14. to 14. Dolphins at Patriots. I'm going to take the Patriots 24-10 t- since Tua Tagovailoa is likely not playing as he is once again in concussion protocol. Without Tua, they struggled a lot, and even if he does play, he wouldn't be 100%, so I will say Patriots 23-17. Saints at Eagles, my team. My team, my team. They're going to win. They're going to be 28-24, and Jalen's going to be starting QB. But the Saints, even though it's so close, they're going to have no chance. It's going to be obvious. The Eagles are going to win 31-7, and A.J. Brown will have a big day. Two touchdowns and 125 okay, so you're plus you're more yards. confident in the Saints' D. I mean, in the Eagles' D. Yeah. The Eagles have been shutting down top teams all year, and I think they're going to do that, except against the Cowboys. But the Saints aren't a top team. Well, if we shut down a top team, we should oh, shut okay. down a mid-team. All right, so Colts at Giants. The Giants, it's a must-win game, really, for them. And I do think they're going to win, 35-17. I don't think it's going to be that close. They're going to take the game 21-20, probably because of a missed field goal for the Colts or a made game-winning field goal for the Giants. All right. Panthers, Buccaneers. I think the Panthers, they're probably going to win 28-14. They're really going to, they're just going to simply run all over the Bucks D. And they're going to be able to not stop them at all. Bucks 28-17. I think Tom Brady's going to have one of those games where he actually performs well. Something he's been doing in like half of his games this year. Maybe less. You, you can't, you can't, you can't see me right now, but I'm shaking my head. I'm shaking my head. Tom Brady... He's garbage. He's trash. All right. Okay. Broncos, Chiefs. Chiefs, mass destruction. Easily. 49-14. I think the Broncos actually embarrassed Nathaniel Hackett and put up a fight, but I don't think they'll be able to beat the Chiefs either way. Bears at Lions. The Lions got to win. And they will. They will. 35-21. They're going to beat the Bears. Yeah, the Lions win, and the Bears continue their sad losing streak with a 24-14 loss. Yeah, Jaguars at Texans. Jaguars. They're going to make the playoffs, and they're going to win this game. Texans 21-13. I know this is surprising, but they put up a fight against the Chiefs and Texans and even beat the Titans. This might be going too far, but I think they're going to win this game. Okay, yeah. So now we're on to the Browns Commanders. I I think it's going to be very short, a very small win, but it's going to be 28-24. I think the Commanders sell the bag and make it so the Packers control their fate with a 31-21 loss against the Browns. Mm 
49ers at Raiders. The 49ers by 14. 35-24, they're going to beat the Raiders. Yeah. 49ers 38-24, but if I'm going to be honest, I might have to make that a little lower because the 49ers defense is really good. So I'm going to actually make that 39-10. Jeez, you're really moving that down. Uh, Jets at Seahawks. Jets revenge game. Gino is going to lose. The Jets are going to beat them, stay alive, and chase. Yeah, the Jets are going to stay alive with the 27-14 win in overtime. The 27-24, right? Yeah. Greg Zerline can't sell the bag this time. Vikings-Packers. Vikings are going to beat the Packers to knock them out of playoff contention, 28-14. I think the Packers will expose the frauds that the Vikings are with a 33-17 win. Rams at Chargers. Chargers... Only because the Rams are a meme and are also trash. 28-17. No, bigger throws for five touchdowns. The Rams win 38-17. All right. Steelers-Ravens. Sunday night. <laughs> Steelers beat Lamar Less Ravens 35-14. The Steelers win 21-6, and their defense takes advantage of no Lamar with three takeaways. And lastly, Bills-Bengals. Monday night. Bengals beat Bills in an upset. 34-28 and OT. I think the Bills are going to take the W. 28-24. Now for our awards prediction. MVP Jalen Hurts if he plays and plays well the last two weeks. Otherwise, I'll have to go with Patrick Mahomes. He's having himself a fantastic season. He's pushing, uh, Jalen Hurts, you know, if he plays at least one more week. He's pushing to play against the Saints, so, you know, it's Jalen, so he's going to do well. Offensive Player of the Year, Justin Jefferson. I don't like always giving this award to quarterbacks, and Justin Jefferson has been insane. And it's early, but by the time he retires, he might be the GOAT at wide receiver. Jay Jettas, yeah. Not only has he had an insane statistical year, he's also been really clutch. I mean, he single-handedly beat the Bills in that game. Would you agree? Yeah. And he did not catch that ball, the game's over. Yeah. Justin Jefferson has two seasons with 1,600 yards in three years, while guys like Randy Moss, Antonio Brown, Megatron, and many other receivers have had that many in like 10 plus seasons. Now for defensive player of the year, I have to go with Micah Parsons. Some weeks he's just unblockable and gets a sack or good pressure almost every play. Yeah, I gotta go with Nick Bosa. He's a beast at tackling the running back and sacking the QB. And he also has a great statistical year. For my offensive rookie of the year, I have... Uh, this was a tough decision, but I went with Garrett Wilson. The guy reminds me of Cooper Cup, and he's almost impossible to bring down in a one-on-one in the open field. It, it would be Chris Olave if Wilson played without Flacco or White because he has no touchdowns with Zach Wilson. And Christian Watson would have had it if he was, like, anything worth mentioning before Week 7. I got to go with Christian Watson. It feels like he gets catches and at least one touchdown per week like consistently on a daily basis for defensive rookie of the year this was who i predicted at the start of the year to get it but ahmad sauce Gardner. bro is locked out and has intercepted the league qbs who are in the pro bowl like josh allen and tua turned the ball over yeah well i don't think we should make fun of him he's in concussion protocol be nice to the guy anyway what i do gotta say though is that sauce Gardner is a beast he, in the Lions game that we were at, he locked them down so well uh, uh, that they didn't target game. him once in the entire game. Bro, that was such a goofy game. For comeback player of the year, I need to go with Saquon Barkley. I think his comeback is slightly more impressive than Derrick Henry's because, let's be honest, who expected Henry not to have a great season? But I know a lot of people who were hating on Saquon, and my, me, myself, I didn't take him when I should have in fantasy. I had, like, the second pick, one of the last picks. I should have got him. I had the ability to. If I did, I would probably be in first. But right now, I'm in second. You know, you know who also came Also, because of Russell Wilson. Yeah. You know who came out of absolutely nowhere? Geno Smith. He wasn't good or starter for a couple of years, at least. And now, finally, his team is making a playoff push again. Again? 
Wow. For coach of the year, I may be biased, but Nathaniel Hackett has been the best coach ever this year and has turned Russell Wilson into an elite quarterback. JK, he got fired, by the way. Nick Sirianni is a genius, and the Eagles are probably going to be one in the NFC and NFL. I may be biased as well, but, you know, Nick Sirianni, he's just... He's led the Eagles and this team that nobody knew they could get this far I to be 13-2. and two. Let's go, birds. Fly, Eagles, fly. Oh my God, come on. Rob Gronkowski spoke to the media about a possible comeback next year, and he would at least be a good blocker and having some red zone upside for whatever team he goes to with Brady, if Brady keeps playing. And imagine if Brady and Gronk go to the Niners and the Niners get to underuse two star tight ends that are good at blocking and receiving. Brady and Gronk could play for the Bucks, the Patriots, the Raiders, or the Niners next year. And tell me if there's another team that you think he could play for. I mean, at the start of the year, I think there was controversy about the Dolphins, but I'm not sure. So thanks for listening to the second episode of the Trident Sports Podcast. Make sure to follow as well as subscribing to our YouTube channel.